Imagine if you ordered a burger, but you got a Wagyu beef steak. In terms of shopping protections, I'd argue that they have the number one spot. They own the crown for it. American Express has some of the most competitive cards out there, but they're not for everyone. A month ago, I did a video on the top mistakes that you can make of American Express. Today, we're taking the opposite argument and why you should consider one of their cards. With that said though, big favor is to give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. That way other people can see this. And if you are new to the channel, you want to get extra cash back or maybe take some cool trips from your everyday spend, then consider subscribing. Number one, they have some of the most affordable cards on a net annual fee basis. Unlike a lot of other issuers, they do a lot of partnerships where they end up getting credits. For a lot of people, especially their target audience who is actively using these benefits, you have a lower net effective annual fee. Case in point, we have the gold card. 250 annual fee sounds pretty aggressive, but you also get $10 per month for Uber, totaling $120 a year, and also $10 a month for dining with partners such as Grubhub and also Shake Shack. Best case is 250 minus 120 minus 120 is a $10 effective annual fee. Be super careful about this and also be honest with yourself. For example, if you don't regularly use Uber, then maybe that $10 credit is only worth $5 or maybe it's worth zero. At the same time, there are ways to use the credit in ways that you might not realize. So for example, if you want to do Uber Eats, you can do pickup and you would avoid a lot of the fees. For example, there's a pinza place that we normally go to, probably the best pinza in San Francisco. Total cost is 42 and you have sales tax. And yes, Mandy and I end up getting our separate pinzas because it's that good. On Uber Eats, it's $21. And if you look at their menu, it's the same $21. Your mileage may vary, but in my area at least, the prices are exactly the same almost all the time. Outside of the gold, you do see the same formula for a lot of their other mainstream cards. This includes the flagship platinum as well as the more economic green. In fact, for the target audience, the platinum card might even be a money maker. So you are paying that big fee, but you're getting more in credits back. A lot of people ended up realizing this in 2022, that they're comfortable paying a higher annual fee if it was a lower effective annual fee. MX says it signed up more platinum card holders this year in 2022 than ever, with millennial and Gen Zs making up about 60% of all new card holder growth. Since the launch of the Chase Sapphire Reserve, American Express has doubled the number of platinum card holders. And in that time, they went from 450 to 550 to now 695. The cards are definitely not for everyone, but depending on the services you use and where you live, it might be a lot more affordable than you realize. If you're on the fence and you want to quantify it a bit more, we do have calculators for all of these. So if you Google ask Sebi Platinum worth it or gold worth it, it should pop up. Just make sure to be reasonable with your numbers and not overvalue anything. The second reason to get American Express cards is that they have some of the strongest points earners out there. On the personal end, you have dining, US groceries, as well as flights. On the business end, they're great for things like gas as well as advertising. Whether you live in a high or low cost of living city, your biggest cost outside of your mortgage or rent payments is probably food. These are some of the most competitive categories out there, and Amex does have a lot of competition, but I think they're a bit ahead. The Chase Sapphire Reserve, one of the best dining cards out there, is only 3x back for dining. There are nuances, and you can argue this via pay yourself back or via the travel portal for more economic travel, but if you just look at the raw basis, three versus four, it's easy to go off the four. Another pretty good one is the Capital One Saver, earns you 4% back on dining, but has a $95 annual fee. This actually ties back into point number one. Would you rather get 4% and 3% on a bunch of categories with a $95 annual fee, or 4x back and 3x back on a ton of categories, but a 250 annual fee and upwards of 240 in credits. I have some family that prefers a saver because it's more straightforward and they're not juggling credits, but for a lot of other people out there, the lower effective annual fee just makes more sense. If you are living in a high cost of living city, then American Express cards allow you to have your cake and eat it too. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, whether these ones or pretty much any other card out there and you want to support the channel, we do have links that are on our website, asksebi.com, and also down below in the description box. As always, make sure that the cards are competitive, that they make sense for you and work for your circumstances, but otherwise using those links is a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Number three, and this might be a controversial one, but I'd argue that they have some of the best transfer partners out there and one of the strongest currencies. American Express points are called MR points, membership award points, and they have some of the lowest floors, but also highest ceilings. If you are someone that's after cash back, then they don't feel that great. You're only getting 0.6 cents per point as a statement credit. If you do the math, four times 0.6 is 2.4% back. Put another way, 100,000 points is only $600 in value. With aspirational travel though, you can generally get something like two to maybe even 10 cents per point. In that case, at two cents per point, 4X might be 8% in value and 100,000 points might be something like $2,000 in value. Okay, but what about City, Capital One, and Chase? 
Even though they also allow you to transfer to partners, I would say that American Express just has better options. Okay, 30 second primer on transfer partners. Step number one, you're taking your points that you're earning from the bank program like MR points and transferring it into miles or hotel points. This is a one way street, so once you do this, you can't transfer it back. Number two, you end up taking the airline hotel points to book travel. For airlines, it might not even be of them, it might be of one of their partners. So for example, one of the best ways to book ANA is to transfer MR points over to Virgin in order to book with their partner, ANA. How valuable a program is, is fundamentally driven by their award charts. So pretty much how many points do you need to fly from these two different destinations, and also what's the cost of business in first class. Case in point, even though I like Delta, I have Delta status, and I love flying them domestically when I'm paying cash, they are one of the worst transfer partners out there. So much so that people in the points community jokingly call their points Sky Pesos. The reason it sucks is because their points are generally tied towards cash rates. So for example, let's say there's a $1,000 flight, you might need 100,000 points to book it. If the flight ends up going to $2,000, it now might be 200k points. For points, for transfer partners, we're looking for outsized value. So how do we get value beyond a normal return? Instead of having 100k become a $1,000 flight, how do we make it into a $10,000 flight? In general, I would argue that American Express has more of these partners that are high value. Side note, let me know if I should go through each of their partners and kind of how you would redeem your points. I feel like that is an interesting video, but if there's no interest, I don't want to waste my time. Or maybe even just a tier list for each of the partners, that way you have a general idea. Of the other programs, I think the only one that even holds a candle to this is going to be Chase. And most of this is due to the fact that they have Hyatt as a partner. I think you can argue whether the hotels are as nice as Bonvoy or something or Hilton, but of the points program, I think Hyatt has the best one. In addition, American Express has had these transfer promotions where you end up getting more value for your points. And to be fair, just because there's a deal doesn't mean you should transfer it over, but I like that they're actually trying. Number four, if you are a frequent traveler, I'd argue that American Express has some of the best travel cards out there with a few exceptions. Platinum, Platinum Business, Delta Reserve, and Delta Reserve Business are just amazing cards given the network. In fact, I'd argue that they have most of the US covered in some form or another. This includes Charlotte, Dallas, Denver, Houston, Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, JFK, LaGuardia, Philadelphia, Phoenix, San Francisco, as well as Seattle. If you are someone that's in a smaller city, they did partner with Escape. Not going to read through this whole list, but you have airports like Fort Lauderdale, Oakland, Rhode Island, as well as Reno. Also factor in that they do have a growing international footprint, which includes Hong Kong, London, as well as India. As much as I love the other issuers, no one has the coverage of American Express here. Product-wise, Capital One might be the closest, but they're still growing. As a filming, they're in one airport, and hopefully by the end of the year, maybe three. On Chase's end, they are launching Sapphire lounges, but it's supposed to be part of Party Pass. So funny enough, you might be able to go into the Sapphire lounges with your American Express cards. As someone who started traveling a lot more, this has been a game changer. Being able to get a cup or two of coffee before a flight and also a plate or two of food doesn't hurt. Also nice to have fast internet because I've had to upload stuff, especially before international flights. And to be fair, there are nicer lounges out there. Most first and business class lounges, the international ones, are nicer, but a lot of those require you to fly business in first. For example, I'd happily go to a Polaris Lounge or Emirates Lounge over this, but that's generally not an option. Factor in that you also get a party pass card that works for lounges and you have access to Plaza Premium Lounges. Moving beyond their core cards, I'd argue that they have the best keeper cards. Keeper cards are ones where there's an annual fee, but you're getting credits and generally hotel nights that help you compensate and kind of overwhelm that fee. For most people that travel, you should be getting value, so it's the idea of paying $100 for a hotel night that might cost you $200. In the late game, especially if you have Player 2 on board, you're going to see a lot of Bonvoy Brilliance and especially Hilton Aspires. I feel like at that stage you are at a higher disposable income and you're generally looking to upgrade your trip. I've seen two player setups where they have between 6 and even maybe 10 Aspire cards. Even at 10, that's $4,500 in annual fees, but you're getting $2,500 in Hilton Resort credits and also $2,500 in airline incidentals more or less covering the fee, and then you have 10 nights that you can spend at the Waldorf Astorias, Conrad's, and LXR properties of the world. If you consider that a lot of these properties generally run you for at least $1,000 a night, then you're getting a ton of value. Put another way that's like ordering a burger and then getting a Wagyu beef steak instead. In the Hotel Keeper card world, I would argue Chase and maybe now Wyndham are the only games in town. So on my end, I'd happily see more 500 to 750 annual fee Hotel Keeper cards from Chase. And of course, where it makes mathematical sense due to the nights that you get in credits. Chase Galaxy of Hyatt card. Number six, the fact that you can spend your way towards additional nights and also elite status. 
For example, the Hilton Surpass has a free night after spending $15,000 on the card. Hilton Business has a free night at 15 k and also 60 k For Delta, you can get the Delta Platinum and Delta Reserve cards to get MQMs. It gets a lot more complicated, but for a lot of people, the target is the 25 k MQD waiver. If you are someone that has very high spends, probably a business, then it might make sense to go for Diamond. This is definitely not for everyone, but outside of JetBlue, and now finally American Airlines, there haven't been that many options for this. With number seven, the last one, we have insurance benefits. For a long time, this was a pretty weak point with American Express, but it's something they've steadily addressed. And to be fair, it does still depend on the card. So for example, the gold card has some good coverage, but not as great as the platinum. On the travel end, the Platinum has some of the most competitive coverage out there outside of maybe CDW, so Collision Damage Waiver. That's their weak spot, but everything else is pretty good. On the shopping end, I'd argue that they have the number one spot, they have the crown, especially given their treatment of return protection. For example, let's say I buy a new mouse, I use it, I don't really like it, but I haven't returned it because I haven't had time because I was traveling or I just forgot. You can file a claim within 90 days of the purchase and they'll refund you up to $300 per item. American Express is surprisingly chill about this process. With other issuers who have to send it back and pay for shipping, American Express sometimes just tells you to either keep it, toss it, or give it to a friend. I feel like I've used this as more of a prop than anything else at this point, but I ended up buying this, wanted to return it, and kind of forgot about it, and they just told me to keep it. Be aware that there are a ton of rules, so you can't buy a plant or something and then have it die and then try to return that. Uh, don't try to return a dog or something, that's kind of weird. Yeah, there's a lot of rules, but it's surprisingly useful. There also is a cap for $1,000 per card per year. Your mileage may vary, but this perk can easily save you a few hundred, maybe even a few thousand dollars a year, especially if you are someone that's busy, that travels, and maybe have a very demanding job. I think if I had a very busy job, went home, had to take care of the kids, dog, and do a bunch of other stuff, it's not unreasonable to forget about returns or to be so overwhelmed with other things. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a burger emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is what do you like about American Express? What are your favorite features and benefits? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Also, feel free to share any stories because I think other people would appreciate it. Big favor, thumbs up, share this with a friend, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.